In today's lesson, we will be talking about patterns. The goal is for you to learn how to do patterns for ones, twos, threes, and four beat patterns. Before we start any patterns, we always want to do what Anthony Maiello says, which is remember our checklist. This is found on page 25 in the book. I remind you that you need a proper stance with both feet securely on the podium ready to start. The correct posture has to be there with shoulders and back in a nice comfortable and upright position. We need to have good control of our baton by having the right grip. After that, we want to survey the performers in the room, moving our head around and finding any that everybody is prepared. We then come to our ready position, and then we have, before we start anything else, we have the internalization of the pulse. What does the piece sound like? What kind of energy are you going to release with your beat and your preparatory beat? Once we've internalized that, we then have our preparatory beat prepared to give the information that is necessary and we give a good solid breath in order to give whatever preparatory beat we need. The one pattern is done by simply coming forward, rebounding off the bottom as if you found the bottom of the horizontal plane and you're bouncing up off of it, and then coming back down. There is a slight wrist hitch that goes with this and almost makes a small oval. Bounce, 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 bounce. It's not technically a straight up and down motion, though many people do that. There are plenty of conductors who have. But generally more of a bouncing, circular, or oval shape pattern. Notice that there is a slight bend in the wrist and that the tip of the baton never goes below the table. Bounce, 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 bounce. One, 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 one. When we start this, we come to our ready position. One, 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 one. The two pattern looks something like a J or a check mark. It is done by coming down and then rebounding out and then coming back up to the top. One, two, one, two, one, two. As we do this, a tendency which is a bad habit is to come down off to the right on a diagonal and then bouncing up. That is inappropriate. We want to be coming down and then bouncing out, allowing the performers to see that second beat easier. One, two, one, two. And if we were to draw that, you would see a very distinct, almost J shape to it. Down, out and then a swoop back up. One swoop, one swoop, one swoop. Again, the two pattern looks something like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Another word of caution. If you bring the rebound up too high and then come back, making almost like a U shape, the effect will be to make a swatting motion, which is not desirable. One, two, one, two, one, two. Looks like you're trying to hit something. You don't want that. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The three pattern is almost like a triangle. We come down 
we move out to the right, and then as we come back, we click our beat 3 just above where we clicked beat 2 on our swoop back up. One, two, three. One, two, three. There are a few different ways to do the beat 2 to 3 transition. One is to come down and come out and then on almost like a pivot. One, two, three, come back up. The second way is to go down and then do a loop. Two, and then loop around. Three. One, two, three. It doesn't matter which one you do. Both are effective. What matters is that we see a clear and distinct three in roughly the same spot but slightly elevated as the two. So, our three pattern looks like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The four pattern is slightly different from all the others. The reason for that is that after our initial downbeat, we move in to the left to create the second beat. The third beat then comes out to the right, and our fourth beat is up and swooshing back. It's the cross to the right that is different and makes the four pattern happen. We never give the four pattern by going out first and then in. That is not right. We want to go down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, and up. Same as with the three pattern, the little swoosh between three and four, or the direct change uh, before the swoosh is totally appropriate. It does not matter if you loop it or if you do the little change. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we find three and then four slightly above. Same as with the three pattern. With the four, um, the four pattern, there is an important aspect to consider. And that is that we don't want to, when we're crossing to the two, pivot on our elbow and pull in towards the body. Doing this, one, two, three, four, makes a very uncomfortable gesture and makes it hard to see the two because it moves the forward plane back into the body. And that's a very difficult thing for a performer to see. We want to keep the elbow out and we want to let the wrist do the bending. If I change so that you can see that, if I go backwards here, you will see that my wrist is going down, in, you'll notice that I'm not pulling with the tip of the baton this way. I'm coming down, in, out, and up. The four pattern looks like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To avoid the problem of pulling our wrist in towards the body on beat two during a four pattern, this exercise might be helpful. Stand up next to the wall and let the tip of your baton just barely touch the wall. As this happens and you do the four pattern, try and keep the tip of the baton gently up next to the wall. You'll find that it's a, a good way to really feel what our wrists are doing and to keep in mind not to pull that elbow around, making that uncomfortable pull away from the forward plane. Um, doing this exercise can be done on beats, on uh, patterns for ones, twos, or threes. Um, all will work to help keep our patterns where they need to be. But I recommend using the wall as a good place uh, to practice your patterns.